Ahoy there, me mateys, and welcome to another episode of The Dark Parade. I am your host, Bo. Uh, as the introduction might imply, we are continuing our look this month on uh, movies, horror movies, in, on, and under the sea. And this one kind of fits all three. Uh, I am finally joined by Pete Quint of Good Beer, Bad Movie Nights. You will hear in the discussion that I was pretty sure we had worked together before. And that doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, and that's because I uh, my brain don't work so good. But we had a really fun time. I am a, I'm a creature feature guy, as regular listeners of this show will know. Uh, I like a movie that is just about some gooey monsters attacking people and uh, Deep Rising has a lot of that. Um, so I, anyway, I think you're going to enjoy this discussion. Uh, we had a really good time talking about it and not just about the movie. We just had a good time. And I think this movie is a great tone setter. Like it's a good vibe movie for, hey, I'm going to throw on this creature feature in the background while... You know, we make some s'mores or do whatever Halloween and or horror related activities that you get up to. And you should be getting up to a lot of those activities, quite frankly. I have already begun, no kidding, uh, begun my Halloween preparation for this year, uh, which is going to involve some animatronics for the first time. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and it's real basic stuff. I, I just want to make a couple of shambling looking zombies, even though they're not going to move. Well, they're not going to walk, but they will move and look like they are uh, uh, just, you know, shuddering corpses. So, yeah, anyway, uh, that that's what I do when I throw on Deep Rising and enjoy myself uh, a movie down in the garage working on my, uh, my corpses, my fake corpses. Yeah, fake. Wink, wink. Anyway, um, I think you're going to enjoy a lot of this talk, and I'll shut up now and get to it. So thanks uh, for coming along on the Dark Parade, as always. And here's uh, Pete and I talking about uh, Deep Rising. Enjoy. All right, everyone. Uh, as, as, as promised, as written in the ancient scrolls, here with me on the second episode of this month full of horrors on on the sea and under the waves is uh, a, a first time guest. Uh, I don't believe this will be the last time for sure, but uh, it's a guy that I've, I've worked with before, but never one on one. So uh, without further ado, it's Pete Quint from Good Beer, Bad Movie Night. Well, hey, everybody. How's it going? Um, I'm thrilled to be here, Bo. Uh... I've been listening to you for a long time, and and uh, now we finally get to uh, meet over the interwebs. Yes, uh, I feel like we have we've done summer series stuff, have we not? I I this is I think this is the first time I've spoken to you oh, live. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Now, I've I've dipped in and out of all of your live streams and this and that's and interacted with you on the book of face, but uh, yeah, this is a. Uh, this is a first, I'm pretty sure. I would have, this is how broken my brain is. Like, <laughs> I, I've got pre-long COVID. <laughs> apparently. That's where, fair. <laughs> where yeah. I, I would have sworn that we did something on the summer series, but uh, that uh, that not being the case. Um, well, maybe we did, and I don't remember. Yeah. I, <laughs> it, it's the how old are we again that's that's a very right it's it's one of them mandela effects uh -huh. yeah you know? right right the berenstein stein bears exactly right. right uh that we were both in a movie called shazam <laughs> <laughs> with shaquille o'neal uh, and uh right. sinbad <laughs> shaquille o'neal and sinbad yeah mm. okay. uh very few people remember that movie as, as it really was. Um, but I'm yes. I'm still trying to think about it. <laughs> so, um, I always like to start off with a little bit of, uh, of, of a backstory of when you encountered this movie. And also, be, we'll talk about it on the backside too. But but talk about the, the show that you do. Uh, because already people are going to be like, uh, screw this bow guy. Let me hear more out of Pete. 
Oh, good. <laughs> uh, so my show is Good Beer, Bad Movie Night. Um, we are a proud member of the Give Me Back My Podcast Network. Uh, we've been around. We are going to celebrate our fifth year anniversary coming up in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, we do our show just once a month because, well, we're, we're kind of lazy. <laughs> but the reality of it is uh, we've got a, a, an educator and someone with a couple of kids and all that kind of stuff. And, and it's just, uh, it, it's a pain in the butt to, uh, for us all to get together. So we just do it once a month. Uh, and that seems to work out for us. And we do exactly, I mean, <laughs> the title of the show is what we do. We, we drink really good beer. I'm a, I'm a home brewer. I've been brewing since 2001. And we review really good beers. And we watch some pretty shitty movies. <laughs> Uh, usually what I pick because it's, it's my show and, and yeah. I'll pick the damn movies. Uh, but, uh, some of them are things that I love. Uh, some of them are, Hey, I picked this because of the title, I mean, Kabuki man, NYPD that's mm -hmm. coming up pretty soon. Why did I pick that? The stupid title. Oh, and it's trauma. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, our fifth year anniversary is coming up, uh, in June. So we're very excited about that. Uh, we are going back to a lost episode that we recorded and listened back to and went, oh, oh, no, we, we cannot release this. <laughs> oh, wow. There, there was tequila involved and it was it was a bad, bad decision. Um, like like there's a there's a steep drop off about about the 45 minute mark of the raw recording. There's like two of us just fall completely off the cliff and it's some seriously slurred and broken thoughts and oh it's it's awful <laughs> so <laughs> which i've pulled a bunch of uh clips out of by the way um so that very first recording was ape the uh korean king kong mm -hmm. uh, uh dino de la renta's ripoff mm -hmm. where, <laughs> where the ape fights a real live dead shark uh and it was filmed in 3d so <laughs> We're very excited. I actually got to see it in 3D. I had a buddy here in town that had a 3D TV and Blu-ray player, which means I have to go out and buy the Blu-ray, and, and I did, and, and we watched it in 3D. It was, it didn't suck. The, the 3D didn't, at least. <laughs> well, right. Uh, I, I'm a sucker for 3D technology. Uh, in fact, uh, Thursday night, I'm going to see the new... Uh, I almost said Captain America movie. That's not right. Oh, no. The one, the Doctor Strange movie. That's what I'm seeing. Oh, yeah. Oh, that would be cool. That, yeah. That's a lot of cool CG 3D. Yeah. Yeah. CG 3D. And I'm still a sucker for that. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll watch Benedict Cumberbund uh, yeah, right. spin <laughs> magic around in 3D. That sounds fun. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I just saw that Spider Man movie, and uh, boy, that's Marvel's just just keeps on knocking them out of the park well there was also the eternals i i didn't i didn't actually watch that one you shouldn't it's... <laughs> no i think i started and i went no this isn't for me <laughs> i'm not sure this is gonna have any sort of uh this isn't gonna connect anything i don't think and it, uh, who knows yeah i mean they might at some point but that whole movie it it's the cinematic equivalent of air leaking slowly from a balloon <laughs> just, ah. right <laughs> it's it's a real dud but yeah that last spider-man movie uh, was real good that's not what we're here to talk about though we're, we're here no, to no, talk no. about an entirely different uh marvel property deep rising you, so, sort of <laughs> no <laughs> yeah but uh, so where did you first encounter uh the argonautica and and its gooey tip denizens you know, this should have been. I'm I'm a creature feature man, straight up and down. I love me a monster movie, mm -hmm. and 1989 was what? How do I say this? a hedonistic year for me? Uh, <laughs> I was I, I I had dropped out of college. I went up to Cedar Point um, in up in Ohio, and I was bartending up there and making a whole lot of money and trying to get laid and not getting laid and there was a lot of a lot of things going on that summer and i did not catch it in the theaters i didn't catch much of anything in the theaters or thankfully otherwise um <laughs> but 
<laughs> I think I would have. Yeah, yeah it turns out <laughs> if you catch a, a deep rising like that, you can get a cream. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I I had heard of Deep Rising. I heard on a couple of other podcasts, and I never seen it. this. is the first time watch for me. So uh, there you go. It uh, it was all brand new. Oh wow! I'm yeah, kind yeah. of jealous of that. Yeah, I, I had a, I had a real good time. Some through most of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we'll we'll get to it, of course. Sure, it's, sure. It's, it's imperfect, but. Uh, oh my goodness! I, I I kind of wish I could go back and watch this. I, I think time. I remember seeing like parts of the what 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 are they called the octolus? Mm -hmm. Isn't that the name of the whatever? I think I had seen parts of it here and there just online, and I just never had watched it uh, front to back. So yeah, this was the first time I watched. The uh, Atoya or the technical uh, the the. <gasps> Creature. That's the scientific term that was yeah, dumped on us in the middle of the film. Right? right, where they're just like, hey, here's how we're kind of justifying this. <laughs> right. How does this billionaire know anything about deep sea uh, Mariana's trench creatures? I don't right. Know. Can't we just shoot it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is sort of the vibe of this movie is like, just shoot it. It's, let's right. see what happens. Point, uh, point the gun at it until it stops moving. That, I think yeah. Is what, how, what how Famic could put it. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's weirdly reminiscent of Aliens. You know, oh, I wouldn't. It's I don't know that I would call it a rip off of Aliens, but it's definitely of that stripe. It it takes little pieces and parts of Aliens and Predator and Jaws, and there's a bunch of a bunch of little homages to a, a, a number of other creature feature sort of films. Uh, all in there. I've, I got a couple written down, but uh, yeah, please continue. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's directed oh, by yeah. Oh yeah, definitely oh, sure, some yeah. trimmers in there. Uh, which Stephen Summers admits he was like, I really love trimmers. He like, here's what I respect about Stephen Summers, and and you can argue a lot of his movies aren't very good. I would probably agree <laughs> with a lot of that. Right. <laughs> but I have kind of a soft spot for especially that original The Mummy with oh, Brendan that... Fraser. I, I I like that. That's got a soft spot in my heart for. Oop, can I say that again? I've got a soft spot in my heart for that. Oh, good lord! Yeah, yeah. Well, it it's just kind of charm. You know, it it doesn't uh, it. It's not pretentious. It's just kind of a creature feature, which is what this is. Yeah. And and I think it's sort of what Stephen Summers likes. And uh, you know, uh, there was. You know, this doesn't dip into things you may not know territory, but Stephen Summers, when he originally wrote Deep Rising, he wrote it at a time where there weren't a lot of creature features coming out. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and unfortunately for him, he happened to kind of catch that wave, <laughs> no pun intended, uh -huh. uh, at sort of the wrong time because Deep Rising comes out in the same year as like Anaconda and uh, I mean, just a, a handful of other uh, creature features that when, when there right. hadn't been for a long time and all of a sudden there's two or three of them out. Yeah, Leviathan, well, Deep Star Six, those were a couple that came out or it came out after them. Yeah. And and, it, and then it backs up against Titanic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, oh, uh, it ran headlong into Titanic. Mm -hmm. um, so it... It didn't really land. Like, I never saw it in the theater because I was going to see Titanic along with the rest of the world. Ugh, I didn't see that. <laughs> um, I saw it twice in the theater. I was just talking oh, about this the other night. The first time I saw it, it was just because it was like, oh, yeah, this is, you know, the biggest movie in the world and let's check uh -huh. it out. And then the second time I saw it, it was because my, uh, my buddy Chad that I do pick six movies with, we went to see it with his father because his father didn't get out in public very much. And would always embarrass himself without knowing it uh, in a public setting <laughs> like that. Oh my. Oh he, no. <laughs> yeah, well, he just didn't. He didn't understand the difference between his living room and the theater. Oh no. He, would he let him rip in the theater? Or no, something? it wasn't like party and that kind of thing. It was just whatever happened to be on his mind that was coming oh. out of his mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there's an actor in Titanic <laughs> who was in 
some soap opera that his dad watched. And so when this guy pops up on screen, Chad's father, Z. Vernon, says, Wait a second, that's old Jack! Just loud (laughs) in this theater. And Chad and I are just like, you know, beside ourselves giggling behind our hands and so forth, like (laughs) schoolgirls. Um... (laughs) This is why you bring him to the theater, though. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it was the reason I wanted to go, because I was like, I don't necessarily want to see Titanic again. I just want to see wanna... Titanic with your dad. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and and I was I was telling a friend of mine, I was like, you could boil Titanic down. At, at this stage, all you have to do is show me the, the movie from the time that the iceberg you know, rips a hole in the side moving forward. And in fact, you can really just shorten it down to that scene where the dude falls and hits the propeller on his way down. And that's really all I need to see at the movie ever again. It's pretty good. It, yeah, it is pretty good. Mm, that's pretty good. So, uh, so I didn't see deep rising in the theater is the point of all of that. Right. Uh, but as soon as it hit home video and I saw it there, you know, I rented it probably one night from, you know, blockbuster or something. And uh, I am also a creature feature guy. And I saw it. I was like, holy shit, this has the ingredients of everything I love about these movies. And it took me a while before I really got on board with it. Uh, By which I mean, like, I've seen this movie probably seven, eight times at this point. Oh, gosh. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) And... I've gotten to the point now where I like it more every time I watch it. The first couple of times I was like, eh, it's, it's a little rickety for one of these. (laughs) And now I overlook all of the shit that I kind of have a problem with in the movie. And I just enjoy the dopiness of it. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) And I think, you know, when I was watching it again for this, I was watching it with the director's commentary uh, with Steven Summers, and I think it's his director of photography uh, as well as who's on that with him. And just hearing the exuberance that Steven Summers has for this movie uh, really got me in the spirit of it even more of like, yeah, this is all real stupid, <laughs> but it's it's stupid in the most harmless kind of way. You know, where it's just like, this movie just wants to to entertain you and even if it's imperfect at doing that, that's what's on its mind. You know, yeah. it, it, it's not trying to make a lot of heady arguments about, you know, uh, being good caretakers of our planet or anything <laughs> like that, like 70s eco horror was. It's just uh, yeah, like, it, it's like, just a big, dumb, blow em up movie. Uh, and I I think it, I don't like this will have a lot of feet, have a lot of legs over the years if the actors are having a good goddamn time in the movie. And it, I thought it was yeah. very clear that everyone was having an absolute hoot. Treat Williams, primarily, he was loving this movie. I'm, I thought Famco was having a good time with it also. It, mm-hmm. uh, there was, you, you could tell the energy that was coming off those people, even though the dialogue was <laughs> kind of awful. And uh, <laughs> that, that CG, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. But they were... There was there was an energy coming off of the film, and I I thought it was refreshing that nobody, uh, no one was was uh, phoning this in. They were all going uh, just uh, just right into this these parts and having a great time. Oh, and especially for my money, Kevin J. O'Connor mm-hmm. uh, playing uh, Pantucci. Talk in talk about movie. the money, the mummy. I mean. <laughs> That's that's yeah. why I, I didn't recognize him until he spoke. Like, oh, that I know this cat, uh, and yeah, for sure the mummy. He was the weird, the, the weird brother in the mummy. Yeah, Benny. Benny, yeah. right, right. He's in fact, Stephen Summers talked about how like he showed up for this movie kind of schlubby, and he after uh, they finished this movie and it was in post production and they were working on the effects and all that kind of stuff. And that and honestly, that's one of the reasons that this movie kind of ended up in the middle of Anaconda and a bunch of other movies that are a little bit like it is because ILM was working on the effects for a long time, even though they don't... It, it took like an extra year to release it because the yeah. effects were like, oh, we don't know what to do. This is wackadoo. 
first time we've done sort of yeah. a spaghetti monster or <laughs> octopus monster spaghetti monster. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, this it, it was a couple of years after Jurassic Park, and this was almost fully CGI as opposed to that mix of practical and right, and right. There, CG. How, how much of the monster was puppet? I, now, there were some the gore effects, a lot of that was practical, which was glorious. Yeah, um, there are a couple of moments like Rob Bottin, uh, was, was behind a lot of the creature design. And there's a great story he tells, uh, Suvers tells about how, uh, if you remember the scene where uh, Treat Williams and Famke Jansen are in like one of the flooded corridors and the thing bursts between them. Uh -huh. And that's a practical oh. effect. And, and Summers kept asking Robotin, he was like, hey, I need this thing to, to move past them. And I need you to design something. And Botin was like, yeah, yeah, I'll give it to you. <laughs> and he was like, "I look, I got to shoot this scene. Where the fuck uh -huh. is it? And, the, and Steven Summer says, so it takes like three months longer than I think it's going to. And this box shows up with an air cannon where it's going to shoot this thing between the <laughs> actors who were like, it's going to do what now? You're going to you're gonna aim a cannon right. at us? <laughs> we're, we're the stars here. Don't... <laughs> Don't point no cannon towards it. Right. But it, yeah, it was just good, you know, good old fashioned Robo team <laughs> magic where he was like, well, if they're, if we're going to do it, why not overdo it? Um, but, but yeah, so, uh, you know, and, and Summers admittedly was not thrilled about the effects work in retrospect and that kind of thing. So that's all understandable. Um, but. Uh, despite all of that stuff, uh, you know, let's just yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's get back on track. <laughs> yeah, enough of this. Right? Um, <laughs> so it, it we start off with uh, with Treat Williams, who plays Finnegan, is his name in this movie, and his crew, which is Pantucci, played by Kevin J. O'Connor. Oh, oh, let me finish the story I was telling about uh, Kevin oh, sure. J. O'Connor. Yeah. Sorry, so um. I got I distracted myself with all this team talk. But so Kevin J. O'Connor shows up, he's kind of schlubby on set for this, and while they're waiting for the effects work to come in, Steven Summers is writing The Mummy and sends the script because he had such a good time working with Kevin J. O'Connor, who improvised a lot of his own mm -hmm. dialogue in this movie. Um, he sends the script to Kevin J. O'Connor and is like, Hey, I'm thinking about you for this Benny part, would you be interested? And Kevin J. O'Connor says, like, sure, I had a great time working on Deep Rising. Uh, I'd love to work with you again. Um, let me know where and when. And Stephen Summers says he shows up to set, and he's lost, like, 40 oh. pounds, has this mustache, that just had totally transformed himself. And and he talks about, like, that's just Kevin J. O'Connor. Like, he's a consummate professional where he totally chameleons himself for the part. Wow. And, uh, which for, you know, a movie like this, for him to just be kind of the comic relief. Uh, but I think, it, it, you know, he's kind of wonderful. It, there, are, there are a couple of lines in particular from him that are both improvised that I, I think are like genuinely good <laughs>, laughs in the movie. But anyway, all right, right so right. back to the plot. So, all right, so Finnegan uh, Pantucci, who is the Kevin J. O'Connor character, and then there's Layla, who is Pantucci's would-be girlfriend. girlfriend. And they are, they have their own little ship that Finnegan pilots with a joystick, which I appreciate. <laughs> right. <laughs> like a, like a really 2600 joystick or, or a Zaxxon, a Zaxxon yeah. uh, joystick is more like it. Oh, it could be, it could be Zaxxon, could be Tron, Tron. Oh, very good, yeah. could, could be any of these. And they have been hired by a bunch of mercenaries um, led by Wes Studi from Last of the Mohicans fame. Yes. And, <laughs> right. I, I was thinking Sphinx from Mystery Men. Oh, well, that also true. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's Hanover is Wes Studi. There's Mulligan, Mason, Billy, guy named T-Ray, Mamuli, Vivo, bunch of right. thugs. And the, the Marines uh, from Aliens, basically. Totally, uh -huh. except jerks. <laughs> yes. 
Sure. <laughs> I mean, but they're, I mean, they're kind of uh, they're kind of the villains, and of, of villains, all of yeah. them, like, yeah, you would know like Clifton Powell, who plays the the guy Mason, uh, Dijuban Hansu from Amistad, and a bunch of other things plays Vivo. Uh, Jason Fleming is, is Mulligan, who you would recognize from, uh, maybe. Mm. Yeah, like he was in From Hell. He's just been in all kinds of shit. He he's a an a, like a character actor that I know, but he's one of those guys I don't know exactly how I know him. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how I thought Treat Williams was. I'm like, I know that guy. <laughs> Treat Williams, I I think it's because I have a a weird fondness for the movie Hair. Oh, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. And. And because he's in, the, and also things to do in Denver when you're there. I don't know that one. And he yeah. played, oh yeah? my goodness, he plays a character named Critical Bill. And uh, things to do in Denver when you're dead is coming on the heels of like Pulp Fiction and Ooh. that kind of thing. So it's it's got, got that kind of vibe All to right, it. Write that one down. But it's Andy Garcia assembling some guys for one last job that includes treat williams and christopher lloyd and I mean, oh god really I, yeah i gotta yeah i gotta see this for sure stack cast but critical bill is the lunatic of them he's the the loose cannon and um may or may not be as he puts it a fecal freak <laughs> because of some time he spent in prison right. <laughs> where uh, he may or may not have eaten poop i didn't catch that but okay go on yeah <laughs> And dude, it's it's very much uh, like I said. It's 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 it is somebody trying to write Tarantino mm-hmm. dialogue, which isn't always successful. But there is a moment where Treat Williams, as Critical Bill, is beating the shit out of a dude, and he yells, "I am Godzilla, and you are Tokyo." <laughs> it is a treat. He is so much fun in that movie. Uh, so I, I I like Treat Williams a lot, and I think he's like you you said earlier. He's having a ball uh-huh. in this movie. Um, he knows he and Kevin J O'Connor and Famke Jansen and all these people. They know the movie they're in, and they are not trying to elevate this any more than it needs to be. They're just looking to have have fun. And I appreciate movie. that in a in a monster movie. Just give me fun and that's what i'm looking for and this this did it yeah so they're these mercenaries have hired finnegan and his crew to take them out to the middle of nowhere and uh kevin j o'connor kind of sniffs around and realizes like oh shit they've got some missiles and some heavy hardware that they're taking out with them in the middle of nowhere and they don't know what the deal is, but that's kind of the gig is, hey, we're paying you not to ask questions. And there's some back and forth on the ship uh, with, you know, like them finding guns and pointing guns at each other. And this happens a couple of times. And Treat Williams is very much the guy that's like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Everybody calm mm-hmm. down. Everybody just be chill. Like we're we've all got a job to do. And how about we don't shoot each other to get there? Right, right. There's a lot of uh, testosterone going, and everyone kind of wants to shoot everyone. <laughs> it's, it's, yes, right. We've just started the movie. Just let's let's get on with this. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Treat Williams' character is always trying to lower the temperature in the room yeah, just yeah, a little yeah. bit. Uh, so, in, while they're heading out to sea, unsure of where they're going, there is a ship called the Argonautica, mm-hmm. which is this giant like state-of-the-art amazing luxury cruise liner uh owned uh built and owned by this guy named simon canton who is played by uh anthony held who you would probably best remember as the sleazy guy who runs the asylum in silence yes yes that was uh like oh i definitely know that guy (laughs) yeah and surprise surprise he plays a Uh, sleazy sleazy, dude in this movie too (laughs) The apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, maybe. Uh, so, yeah. was this uh, was this cruise ship anything like what you just recently uh, <laughs> uh, went? No, it. Well, I mean, it's not like the one I was on was not nearly as extravagant yeah. as this. But I, 
you can't help but be impressed by the size of for sure things. yeah I, i've been on a couple of cruise and, ships and there is a, a in none of the cruise ships and i've been on a couple of big ones um there's no atrium like that in any of them that i've been on and i'm sure they they exist but holy moly that whole like las vegas hotel in the middle of a ship was yeah something else there, there was a giant lobby because I, I did the Disney. Lobby. Oh, okay, all right. And there is kind. It's not nearly like what you see mm -hmm. in the movie, but there is kind of this big hollow middle in those ships where it's kind of creepy because when you come on, you know, like you they've checked your you know your passport mm -hmm. and taken some of your blood <laughs> right. and all that right. stuff. <laughs> a little stool sample. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. <laughs> offer to their dark <laughs> god mickey but when you come on the ship they're like this is the fred Stoll family and a bunch of people clap and stuff and it's uh, like, oh, this is creepy. right <laughs> I, right it's a little unsettling <laughs> but they do they have some events down there so that you know like you can watch from uh the uh, upper decks you can look down on it um but not again nothing like this where as you put it it's like it's like a casino in the middle of the ship with a big dance club and all kinds of stuff. You know, obviously this is all a big sure. set. Um, although they built, you know, uh, especially for the explosion at the end and that, and that kind of thing, they built a model of this thing. Yeah. There's, there's that, some model work that is, I wasn't sure if it was CG, but when it exploded, I'm like, Holy shit, that's a real thing. Yeah. That's, that's real wood planks coming out of there, or toothpicks, whatever it might be. Uh, yeah, but apparently this model was, like, the size of a school Oh, my bus. gosh. It was that big? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> the, that they, like, it was ginormous. It was great. It, well, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> it looks good. Uh, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, the Argonautica is uh, sailing with, uh, you know, it, its passengers and crew. Everybody's rich everybody's having a good oh, time oh i gotta say uh brian setzer into taiko drums <laughs> that's my mm -hmm. kind of party baby oh oh my goodness <laughs> you yeah. got brian setzer playing and then you do some taiko drums yeah mm-hmm i'm i'm front row and, for that uh as well mm -hmm. you should be uh he plays here i think just about every Christmas. does he yeah i saw him at the columbus zoo a couple uh, maybe a decade ago. That's that's a hell of a show. Please go see Brian Setzer and his amazing orchestra. It's something else. Yeah. Uh, he, he does uh, Christmas oh, show. Oh, so good. The Christmas Radio. show. Yeah. I think I have like three of those CDs. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so uh, in addition to Brian Setzer playing, there's uh, Famke Jansen who plays Trillian. Trillian St. James is her name in this movie, which is The ridiculous. only other Trillian I know is from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That's where they oh, got the shit, name. really? Yeah, 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 yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. That, no, that was Stephen oh. Summers just kind of doffing He's his just cat. dumping all yeah. of his childhood into a movie. Okay, that's all right. I'll oh, for sure. That. Yeah, I mean, if, 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 if you're, you get to make a movie and play with right, all your toys, right. why not, you know? So... Yeah, so um, originally this was going to be Claire Forlani was going to play this part and uh, ended up backing out. Like, she said that she had uh, creative differences and, and so forth. And maybe so, but everything I've heard about working with Stephen Summers is that he's kind of a treat. Oh. Mm -mm. Uh, and so I'm not saying anything against Claire Forlani, but like you know treat williams and kevin j o'connor who returned for like two or three more uh stephen summers movies and like a lot he had a lot of people come back to work with him again it says a lot about it which director, certain, for sure yeah and uh so it it doesn't sound like it, i mean it just may have been the hey we got off on the wrong foot or something because she wasn't there mm -hmm. very long and then famq jansen <laughs> is is cast and there's a, a story about her which she got to set that it's one of the first scenes where Stephen Summers is telling her like you know 
you're in this amazing dress and you're going to be breaking into this room and you're stealing these jewels and you're going to be beautiful and it's going to be great and she just starts crying oh yeah what? and he's like what what's wrong and she says I just, I'm so sick and tired of everybody telling me to be beautiful Aww. in the movie. Oh, that's so sweet. And, it, and he, he says, I listen, I, I understand. And you can look however you want when you're not the romantic lead in the movie. Huh? But you are. <laughs> and I need you to be kind of beautiful. And and this is her coming off of Golden Eye oh. as well. Where, Oof. you know. That couldn't have been fun. But, <laughs> right. <laughs> So, uh, but it, I, I, I felt so bad for her that she's just like, I just want to put my hair up and be a normal person. And he's like, I, I wish I could give that to you on this movie, but I need you to be kind of hot because you are. At, at least for the jewel stealing part. I mean, that's, she's yeah. that cat burglar sort of thing. And, you know, uh, working her, weaseling her way into, you know, stealing cards and whatever. But yeah, we'll get to this. <laughs> Yeah, and also she's Famke Chan. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Who is just one of the most beautiful women of the, you know, 90s and 2000s yeah, cinema. Yeah, we, we just did a um, review on uh, Hansel and Gretel with uh, Squishy Face Jeremy Renner. And she was, oh, the, sure, sure, she was sure. the witch. And even in witch makeup, like, well, that's that's a pretty gal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, she yeah, she's stunning. And... Anyway, and, and but I, I do think she's fun in this. You know, she, she's she got that kind of sassy, like you said, kind of that cat burglar mm -hmm. vibe. Um, so while she's doing that, all of a sudden, the ship is struck by something. And we get a, uh, a sort of a montage of just, like, power going out, people screaming, just chaos as... Uh, these kind of unseen things attack, you know, the crew and, and passengers. The best, I think, being the woman. Oh, on for the sure. I mean, pretty gal locks herself in the toilet and she gets, I, I assume, uh, grabbed and pulled in through <laughs> through the toilet. Mm -hmm. Oh, you poor thing. Yeah. Uh, what a way to go. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, uh, it's, it's pretty good. And, uh, that could not have felt good. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, something about like somebody being, you know, folded in half that way. And then pulled down just, a drain. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So anyway, things are clearly popping off uh, on board the ship. And um, we cut back to Finnegan and his team who almost collide with this boat in the middle of nowhere and they you know kind of bump into it which damages his ship and that's where the mercenaries kind of leap into action and they're like hey here's what's actually going on there is this cruise ship that has been disabled and so we're going to go on board we're going to rob all the passengers we're going to rob the vault and then we're going to sink the thing and then we're and you're going to take us home. right which i don't since this is a uh, no questions asked boat why does finnegan have a problem with what they're doing i mean he seems to have a a, a conscious yeah. at the last minute like oh you're going to rob these people well, why do you think they're hiring you um i yeah. that, that's the one part of this film that didn't quite jive with me like well you're you're below board. You are being sneaky about this. You're being hired under the table. What what do you think they're going to be doing? <laughs> it's the real like, you know, honor among <sighs> thieves thing. With it's fine if you're going to rob it, but the moment that you're going to sink this boat and kill everyone really? on board, that's where uh, I I think that's where the line is drawn. Uh, for uh, maybe he thought that they were going to harm people and. That's that's where it is. I, Maybe I'm, I'm just trying to put yeah, it together. It, it's, I mean, you're not wrong. It, it like if they're really mercenaries, they should be like, hey, whatever you got to do is whatever. As you long as I got money in the hand, the yeah. check <laughs> right, right, right. But they end up having to go on board though because of this collision with this boat that's just floating near the uh, 
uh, Oceanica or whatever. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, Argonautica, right, right. It, it, which is clearly uh, a Ray Harryhausen reference, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. I don't know that he specifically said so, but of course, uh -huh. right? Uh, but yeah, so they're going to go on board. Like Kevin J. O'Connor and and True Williams are going on board to find the materials to repair the shit that they need to to fix their boat, and they're leaving Layla behind. On I, I kind of forgot that was a subplot ship. that they were looking for parts. <laughs> Well, it's just an excuse to get them on <laughs> right, the boat with all the right, mercenaries. Right. <laughs> and they they go to the Argonautica, and everybody's gone. Nobody's there. It's, it's just empty. There's right. nobody in that grand hall. There's what? There's there's some blood stains, or not stains, but there's uh, there, there's blood left behind. But there's no people, and that that was a really cool scene. I thought when they bust yeah. into that grand ballroom. Bitches, get on the floor. We're robbing y'all or whatever they were supposed to do. And there, there ain't nobody there. And all of a sudden, all these mercenaries go, oh, shit, what is going on here? And it, you can see it on a lot of their faces. Like, this is not how this is supposed to go. And I, I really appreciated that where there's some actual uh, human reaction as to this is not how this is supposed to go. Yeah, it, it's very much the aliens mm -hmm. thing of, well, th there was a fight here and we mm -hmm. missed it. And uh, so uh, Finnegan and uh, uh, Pantucci go to the ship workshop uh, along with some of the mercenaries to guard mm -hmm. them uh, to get repair parts for the boat. And while they're doing this, one of the guys, T-Ray, uh, is played by Trevor Goddard, is off you know kind of investigating because he hears an odd noise and he gets got by you know tentacles <laughs> right well that that was the was that the tremors uh scene where the the the, the floorboards were popping up that's a is little that later, bit later? Okay. yeah uh, but it is that that's when they start really mm -hmm. taking off. But yeah, this is more just like, oh, this guy's gone. And they're like, hey, where, what happened to T-Ray? He was just here a minute ago. <laughs> and so the other guy that's with him, uh, Mamouli, as played by Clifton Curtis, he calls, um, the, you know, the Hanover, the uh, West Duty character. And is like, hey, T Ray went missing, and something's going on down here. And as he is on the radio, he gets grabbed <laughs> and dragged <laughs> off. And so, but they now they're armed, which they weren't before because they were kind of under guard. But they've got weapons now. They take off running, and they run into Famke Jansen. And. They're like, hey, what the fuck is going on? And she's like, I don't know. I was locked in this safe. Yeah, she was, and I she don't was know what's going on either. A, uh, she was locked in a kitchen. Uh, oh, hell. Yeah, like yeah, a pantry. pantry yeah, something. thank you. Yeah, she's locked in the pantry drinking Dom Perignon and uncooked uh, pastries. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and she finds her way out. And, yeah, then they, and they connect for sure. And so they take her and go to meet up with Hanover's group who have found the vault and open it up. And as soon as they open it up, uh, Simon Canton, AKA Anthony held from silence of the lambs drives an oh, ax so into Digimon Hansu's head. And at which point, the other guys open fire and kill everybody but Anthony Hill. And, and the captain. And right, the captain, right, but yeah. yeah. It's such a good axe. No one's expecting it. They open this thing out there and whack. He screams yeah. and he's got an axe in his head. Oh, it's so good. I, I love that scene so it's, much. And God bless this movie for being rated <laughs> R. You know, it's bloody and gooey and violent and It's very uh, gooey, and yeah. loud. <laughs> Yeah. And so th the survivors being, you know, rich guy Simon Canton and the captain explain like, oh, 
these monsters just came out of nowhere, killed everybody. And it turns out that Simon Canton is in the know about all the, the mercenaries because he was going to sabotage the ship on account of it costing so much money to build the damn thing. I, I love the whole, the, the line that, uh, oh, uh, the line, we're, we're all going to die because you screwed up on the math. <laughs> that yeah. one, that, that got a genuine chuckle out of me. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's here. There's a moment that Kevin J. O'Connor has when he's with all the mercenaries um, on the elevator, and he asks one of them, like, can you get asthma all of a sudden? <laughs> that That's one of the And they all kind of look at him like, what, and yeah, that was, that was one of his uh, uh, ad-lib lines. And they all kind of yeah. look at him like, the fuck are you talking about? They cut, they cut yeah. pretty quick after that, because I'm pretty sure that was, <laughs> there was a, uh, a laugh scene after that. <laughs> Yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> it's up, it's yeah. really good. But yeah, so the whole deal is like he's hired these people to sink the ship, collect the insurance money because it will never turn a profit operationally. And then they all get attacked by a bunch of these tentacles. One of and it's basically tentacles with claws at the end and mouths. Yeah, it's got a lot of it's got a predator alien vibe to it. As as it opens yeah, up, sort of. Heavy tremors mm -hmm. as well. And, uh, but it's pretty good. Like, uh, the, the effects aren't great. The design of the creature is really Agreed. good. Yes. The The actual effects work is less there's, good. There's, there's definitely a point in the movie where you can tell where they started running out of money. <laughs> yeah. Money or time, one of the right. two. Uh, but yeah, so they end up eating the captain. And everybody's like, what the hell is this? And this is where Simon Canton says, oh, maybe this is an evolution of the Atoya. Uh, yes. Which is this, like, undersea uh, creature that lives way down. It's deep. like a tube worm or something. It, yeah. Essentially, it's a giant worm that eats something and then it drains it of all their bodily fluids and then spits out the right. carcass. And, and that's what it does. And, <laughs> yeah. And so they're they're trying to get away again because uh, they, they're attacked. Uh, the, one of the dudes, Mason, gets got and he tries to detonate a grenade. Um, and it kills him, him along with a bunch of the, the tentacles. And then... Uh, mulligan the jason fleming dude he's like hey i'm gonna stay by in the stay behind i'm gonna stay in the galley until there's gonna a rescue party comes because i'm freaked out and besides i think i'm safe in here and that's where they come through the vent of the the oven <laughs> right like the the <laughs> the hood and grab him that way he gets, and, he gets uh, eaten so, like the like Andy Circus in the Peter Jackson's King Kong, like like those yeah. those tubey things in the swamp. Yeah, it's real gross. It's, yeah. it's real gross. <laughs> stay, stay tuned for uh, some some Peter Jackson King Kong. Oh, that's, <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> um. So. Anyway, so yeah, the, now they're just on the run. They're shooting the tentacles, which are kind of like unfolding behind them and that kind of thing. And that's some uh, of the worst CGI, oh. I think, when you see just the tunnel full of these tentacles like flopping all over that's, each that's other. That's where the, the color starts getting off just a little bit from the from the, the reality. Uh, yeah. And it, it gets worse from there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So they end up being kind of driven to the bow of the ship where they find the kind of you know refuse pile of yeah, this it's, monster it's the portageon of <laughs> of the tentacle monster because they can't digest the bones so they poop it all out into the, the aft of the or the bow of the ship it's, it's yeah. gross it's real gross it's it's a good gory moment because it's all these like pieces of uh of of body parts everywhere and so Simon Canton, though, is like, hey, I think I can still skate out of this, <laughs> right? 
Because if everyone else is dead but me, I can say, oh, there was this horrible, you know, uh, tragedy on the ship. Still get that sweet, sweet insurance money. And there's nobody around to, you know, say that I was the bad guy. Um, but uh, as he's worried about this, like the the creatures are kind of trying to get through the bottom of the ship and it busts through part of the hull and so the whole lower decks of the ship is now flooded and um, there's a great moment where as like all hell is breaking loose this is you know getting towards the final mm -hmm. flight uh, of the movie uh, and uh, also, you see some of the stuff like, you know, you were talking about that thing from The Thing uh, with uh, the, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, panels, the metal panels of the floor being tossed up. Yeah. As it chases after him and stuff. And like, there's some that's of an that. effective scare. I really enjoy that when when that's done. Yeah, it, that's really good. There's a point where one of the guys named Billy gets grabbed and it's one of those things uh that again unfortunately anaconda did the same thing with john right. Boyd, but it's still pretty good mm -hmm. where the the creature kind of vomits billy out and at first he looks kind of okay and then turns slightly oh. to his right and you realize that the left side of him is mostly digested at this it's point. so good and you can see through his hand like you can see the bones through his hand and part of his brain, mm. oh man, that's that needs to be a poster somewhere. That's so good. <laughs> it's like it, I again, there there are moments in this movie that you you really understand like what they're oh, yeah. going for, and they kind of you stand it. up and clap to this. It's like oh, per beautiful mm, chef kiss. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there, that's happening. West Studi. Uh, gets got a, a great moment between him and and Pantucci, where uh, West Duty kind of scares Pantucci mm -hmm. because he's like up above him on this ledge, and Pantucci like is like holy shit the guy who's been trying to kill me, and he realizes that uh, this guy is half eaten. <laughs> By one of these things and is being slowly, slowly pulled in. Sarlacc ish. <laughs> yeah. Like, and so, this tentacle is savoring every last bite of this guy. <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny because even in the uh, the commentary, Stephen Summers is like, why is this one e uh, eating him so slowly? <laughs> I don't know. But it works. And so West Studi is getting eaten and so Pantucci hands him a gun and says like don't say I never gave mm -hmm. anything to you and as he's leaving because he's not going to shoot him but it's also like look you're done for right. so I'm giving you the a opportunity out. right to right. end your suffering e exactly right do you want to be digested by this thing or do you want to take the express route out of this <laughs> exactly and as soon as he gets up, though, as soon as Pantucci gets up to walk away and leave West Duty there, West Duty takes a shot at him and hits him in the shoulder, and he's like, "Hey!" He screams, "You asshole!" I'm like, "That was the best you asshole I've heard in years." It was great. It's, it's really good. <laughs> like he is genuinely, like it's not just being shot; it's of being offended <laughs> that, like, "Hey, I was trying to help you out," <laughs> and this is the things I get. But West Studi gets what's mm -hmm. coming to him, though, because, like, Pantucci runs off, and so West Studi is like, all right, well, I'm fucked, and I didn't shoot that guy, which is disappointing, but I'm at least going to be able to, again, take the express mm -hmm. route. But... So he puts the gun to his head, pulls the trigger, Sorry. and it, <laughs> yeah, right, it just clicks, he's, he's fucked. <laughs> and there's that look on his face, like, uh, oh, man. Oh. <laughs> um, so, but that that's really good. Um, <laughs> um, and so they end up going to, uh, uh, like they they see there's an island out there, but they can't use Finnegan's boat because they still don't have these engine parts and it's no longer a good means of ex escape. 
And so Pantucci shows back up and is like, hey, I, I think I can fix this and get us all out of here. But uh, Finnegan is like, fuck that. Here's what we're going to do. We're, we've got all these torpedoes that the mercenaries brought on right. board. So we're going to set the autopilot, mount these torpedoes to the boat. You get it working in time so that we can just blow the shit yeah, out get of it the Just Argonaut. long enough to, to make an arc and head right back to the ship to blow it up. Right. And so in the meantime, we're going to take a bunch of these, you know, wave runners that are in the the cruise ship and we're going to use those to get away and get to the this this island, island they see that we the found. Distance, yeah. So that is the plan, but unfortunately, rich guy Simon Canton shows up with a flare gun. <laughs> right, cuz cuz Famka needs to get the keys. And she finds the keys, and he's chasing her around with a, with a flare, with a yeah. flare gun. <laughs> and wondering so, why he can't hit her because you know the accuracy of a flare gun is uh, precise. <laughs> it's like shooting a Roman right. candle at somebody. It's like, gonna go that no way somewhere. Over this. <laughs> right, you can't control it anyway. So yeah, it's just chasing somebody with a bomb. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 a foolish weapon, but it you know when in Rome, like you know, what else you got? <laughs> so <laughs> Finnegan gets gets wind of this, and now he's chasing. He, like he takes some shots at him, chases Simon Canton off uh, to save Trillian at the last minute, and this is the point where like all oh, the tentacles all bust out. They grab Finnegan. Oh yeah, and lift him up, and we get our look at what the real monster is, which is kind of the Kandarian demon from Oh Evil Dead. Well too. said, yeah, I yeah, it was a I was thinking Godzilla King Kong, a big giant oc octopus, but yeah, it's got that 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 mouth to it and eyeballs and all that stuff, which leads yeah. to the next scene. Right. So yeah. So. Uh, he ends up having to like shoot the eye out of the thing. It's, it's a big and, old splatter and it's not very good. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, but he gets away. He gets right. away from the thing. He and Famke Jansen, uh, finally do get out of there on their wave rider. They go to, uh, the boat, but sure enough, Pantucci's gone. And they're like, oh shit, yeah, he got yeah. hit. And, uh, rich guy, Simon Canton, also gets off the boat and onto the onto Finnegan's boat, and but in the process of that, he has injured his oh, he, leg. He compound fracture leg. It was gross. <laughs> yeah. So, but he thinks he's getting away. Little does he know that the <laughs> autopilot has been set. And so, as he tries to figure out how to disable the autopilot, we get a good like game over on oh, one yeah. of the displays <laughs> and the thing you know turns uh in, into the argonautica it explodes uh we see the small boat blow up the big boat blows up we get a look at the monster in the middle of the ship it blows up everything blows up and it's a good explosion it's the ship the practical effect of the ship blowing up is fantastic the yeah. blowing up with a monster. I don't know. Have you seen uh, the remake of Young Gary from 2001? I uh, don't know. Uh, uh, it's a movie. Um, <laughs> 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 that's what I liken it to. It's it's awful. Awful. <laughs> yeah, and there's like that composite shot of oh, them, Tree mm -hmm. Williams on the jet all, and Famke Jansen uh, bursting out in None front of, of the, the the explosion, which should be exciting, and it's not because of the green screen. And ugh, it's gross. It's gross. I'll I'll tell you what I do like though. From slightly earlier than this, when they're on the wave runner and they're trying to get out. Oh, that out. whole that whole action scene inside the boat as they're driving a jet ski up and down hallways. That's bitching. It's really yeah. cool, and there there are moments like he's got this handheld right. shotgun or this sawed off <laughs> shotgun pistol kind of thing, and he'll just periodically like put put it over his shoulder like cock me, <laughs> and <laughs> and she does. Oh, good for those kids, you know. Yeah, uh, as long as you communicate uh, and are 
the same thing. Yeah, they're young yeah, and in right. love, you know. Uh, but it, but it's a, like you said, it's a great action sequence of them, like, spinning around, avoiding tentacles, trying to get the doors open, and, and opening doors by shooting. Right, because that works. Which, <laughs> it, it's nonsense, but, but whatever. It, but I you love know? it so like, much. <laughs> Approved. Yeah. Keep going. I don't care. <laughs> so, but yeah, so they get out, they make it to this island, um, they hear something off of the distance, and sure enough, it's our old pal Pantucci. All right. Uh, who, by the way, he he paddles in on a surfboard. Mm. And that was part of the explosion. If you saw that, yeah, yeah you can mm-hmm. see it in the explosion, which I appreciate. They of like, oh, okay. They at least hearkened back to that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, they they're all on the beach, and it's. You know, like, oh, uh, well, you know, maybe we'll be rescued by someone here on this tropical island. Everything uh, is, has worked out. Everything's mm-hmm. coming up for us. The only poor Layla, we lost her, but everything else is fine. And then there's this giant roar. The camera pulls back from the island and you see there's an active volcano uh-huh. going on. Something is moving Something through the big trees. is towards moving them. towards them through the trees, right? Yeah, and the movie ends with Finnegan's trademark phrase, now yeah. what? <laughs> End of movie. And, and, and then that's, right. Yeah. Clearly trying to set and, up a sequel. <laughs> I, I, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. That's going to be one of our right. three things because it's interesting. So let's talk about this cast, which we've, we've talked about a little bit, but just to, to set our stage of characters... Uh, like uh, like we talked about, we got Treat Williams as Finnegan, mm-hmm. Famke Jansen as yeah. Trillian, Kevin J. O'Connor as, as yeah, Pantucci, yeah. Anthony Held as Simon Ken, Wes Duty as Hanover, uh, and then a, a bunch, bunch of, of character right, right, actors, right. you know, as, as our, our mercenaries. I think the cast is great. The cast is great. However, I want to play. I want to. I want to plant this uh, seed in your brain. If Bruce Campbell had been cast as Finnegan. Ooh. Yeah, that, I mean, you're not That's wrong. my that's my one thing about this movie is uh, Treat did a great job. I have no problems with his performance, but man, if I could get that that good good Bruce Campbell schmarmy through this movie, mm. Mm, oh, that would have been so good. Uh, that's all I got. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, no! You're, you're, you're totally right. Uh, that would have been great. And Bruce Campbell is one of those guys who flirted with being a leading man in honest to goodness big movies. Yeah. And this was this was like a big Hollywood movie. This was right um, after a couple years after uh, Army of Darkness. Like what, three, yeah. four years later? I don't know. In the ballpark, right. is, I feel like. Uh, I'll, in, hold on, Army of Darkness. Ninety four would, would have been. Uh, ninety two. Oh God, ninety two, really? So oh, yeah, wow. so this would have Six been later, like, right? well, it, by mm, release, mm. but it would have been four or five by production. He's he, but but he it, still would have been Bruce Campbell. He wouldn't have been uh, Ash versus Evil Dead Bruce Campbell, <laughs> which yeah. I still love him. Don't don't get me wrong. Uh, oh sure, it's a that that's one of those series that's like, oh yeah, this this totally fits with everything else that you're doing. <laughs> this is this is fun um th- th- this is just as silly as i need it to be uh but you're right like this was still you know like bubba hotep uh, was in the neighborhood oh, yeah, of yeah that's that's about the same time yeah and and, and i think that like if, if you ever want to know like is is bruce campbell an honest to goodness real actor bubba hotep for sure like he is genuinely good dramatic it's wonderful i i love that film so much we're not talking about that film yeah, <laughs> oh, that's the best. i yeah at some point we will but uh yeah Bubba well, Hotep is this so did i read right that harrison ford was originally cast or wanted the the role of finnegan yeah he was he was originally attached um in fact this this kind of spoils one of the three things but oh. that's fine so yeah, he was attached, and Jim Carrey was actually attached in the pantomime. Really? Huh. Yeah, 
And so Harrison Ford dropped out so he could go make Six Days, Seven Nights. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then after he I left, Jim Carrey, and they, they lowered the budget a bunch yeah. because they were like, you don't oh, it's pay not nobody. <laughs> Right. And so once the production budget was cut, then Jim Carrey was like, all right, I think I'll see my way out as well. Which is why you end up just getting more character actors than movie stars. Which I'm kind of cool with. Like, I, I Harrison Ford would have been fun. I think you're right. Bruce Campbell would have been tremendous. Mm, in this movie. Mm, so, mm, so good. I just, I just yeah. think about it. I, I want to touch myself. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, but I, I can't say enough good things about Kevin J. O'Connor. Oh no, no, I, he was, he was marvelous. Um, I, I thoroughly enjoyed his part. Um, I, I like him better than the imagined Jim Carrey performance because I think that would have been a little too over Wait, the top. Mm -hmm. Whereas Kevin J. O'Connor is constantly put upon. You know, he's just trying to do his job and everybody's getting it. Yeah, he, he reminded me of like Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Like, yeah, he yeah. kind of talked like that too. Like, oh, zoinks, everyone. Uh, I can't, I can't <laughs> get the ship to work. So. <laughs> Yeah, there, and there was that great moment in the elevator. Oh yeah, where like uh, the the uh, music is played, the music yeah, is playing in the perfect. elevator, and they also get that like uh, something hits, and the the it shakes and whatnot. And True Holmes goes, "What was that?" And he goes, "Uh, I think it's the girl from Ipanema." <laughs> Idiot! It's, it's a it's good, good joke, joke. and. It, and Kevin J. O'Connor, like, when he delivers line, it's the, like, hey, you asshole. Like, it is <laughs> pitch perfect for what this movie ought to be because it's the right blend of silly and dramatic enough so that it's not all just a joke, but his character is, is really delightful uh, in this movie. Yeah. So I, I love him. Famke Jansen, of course, is, is, you know, not just beautiful. I think she's a lot of fun. Uh, in this movie, and looks like she's having a good time. I, I thought, yeah, she looked like she was having a ball. I mean, she got to she got to ride on a jet ski, man. Who, who doesn't want to do that? Right, and she got to be a cat burglar, and, and you know, and, I'm and sure she had that great big gun that everyone said, "Hey, look, this has a big kick to it." And I thought this detail was so much fun, where there were three of them or something, and they were supposed to dive through the water to get to the next cabin or whatever. And the monster comes and attacks them, and they all turn around and start firing with these big, stupid, what uh, I got it written down, M1L1 triple pulse assault rifle, which I think is in Resident Evil. But anyway, they, they tell her earlier on the film, like, okay, you can have this, but it's got a kick to it. And this thing literally knocks her back into the water. Yeah. <laughs> and her face has good. this surprise, of like, oh shit, <laughs> as she splashes. Yeah backwards into this water it's marvelous it's it's such a good little little detail in this film uh i, I absolutely just love it <laughs> yeah it yeah it, it's terrific uh i think she's great west duty is a great heavy it's it's always fun to see him show uh, in a movie oh, as yeah. a villain and uh, and of course anthony held just being a, a disgusting awful person <laughs> plays it a little too too well <laughs> Yeah, I don't know I, personally. I, I'm sure he's a wonderful person. <laughs> probably a delight. Yeah, but uh, it, yeah, it's just a, a, a just an awful shit boy in this movie. Um, so yeah, and I mean, I, I, anyway, I, I, front to back, I, I I think now that you said Bruce Campbell, oh, though, I'm just like, well, that yeah, you're right. That would make the movie <laughs> yeah ten times better. But um, so. Uh, that's the cast. And so let's talk briefly about themes for the movie. Uh, which I don't think will linger on very yeah. long. Because I don't... It's not a heady film. It's not a, not a, it's not a lot of meat on this bone. <laughs> yeah, yeah <you> get it. <laughs> it's... Like, Honor Among Thieves, yeah. we talked about... Uh, Maybe like, hey, we don't really know what's in the ocean. Maybe, I, 
it doesn't and, have a lot to say. Like you said earlier, this it's, there's not an environmental issue here. There's no political statements being made. It's just a monster movie, and by God, I appreciate that. Just just give me a creature feature. It's great. Yeah, even you know we talked about like Orca earlier this season uh-huh. already or this month already. It's like well that you know there's this kind of Moby Dick kind of quality to it, and 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 certainly the, this idea of like you know our relationship to well, other sentient beings on the yeah. planet and that kind of thing even even with and, orca though it's it's kind of a, a re, should, should i say reverse revenge though because the orca is taking yeah. revenge on mankind so that's that has a lot of story to be told there's there's a lot of things going on back there yeah yeah right right and, and this doesn't have even that no, no, no. you know it's uh, it kind of goes back like i don't know if you if you ever saw this it was some i want to say it was like stephen king's world of horror uh which was a, a a tv series or a short series done back in like the 80s <laughs> and it was just interviews with different horror mm-hmm. directors it was really interesting it was like you know west craven would oh. pop up and that kind of mm-hmm. thing and there was an interview with sam raimi and he said there are three rules of horror movies one is that the dead must walk the second is the guilty must be punished mm-hmm. and and the third is a variable <laughs> there's whatever yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there's hey, something else so make him ups <laughs> yeah and and when i was thinking about themes of this movie that's what popped out of my head of like i guess the guilty must be punished would fit because that's what the, happens. Like people who do awful things end up dying horribly. The, the baddest this. of the bad die, but you know the innocent also died. I suppose. Yeah, poor Layla gets it, and she didn't deserve Not, it. Oh, <laughs> she was more abused than anybody on that ship. <laughs> on a driving yeah. rainstorm, fixing whatever on the hood of the boat. <laughs> While right. Finnegan played poker, <laughs> whatever. He, he is not the world's greatest boss. No, there, there's no, no question no. about that. He's he's leaning pretty heavy on that. I'm the manager, sort of. <laughs> yeah, like hey, those who can't do teach, <laughs> right? Is the Finnegan motto. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of it for themes. Like, it, it, listeners, if you think uh, there is a deeper meaning to Deep oh, Rising. Please drop me a line because i sure as hell don't know what it is uh so enough of that nonsense let's get to the real nonsense (laughs) which is uh what what are your final thoughts on this movie and i'm really curious because you haven't you've only seen it recently and especially coming out of this conversation where i'm clearly very enthusiastic Mm -hmm. about this (laughs) so so as always, uh, you know we we scored this movie on a uh, five star scale. Uh, half stars are allowed, but not quarter stars because we're not monsters, <laughs> unlike the Octolus or whatever. Uh, but well, yeah, where where did you land with this thing, uh, score wise, and just how did how did you feel about it's, it? It's weird because I had a good time with it, but it's not a good movie. So how do you <laughs> how do you <laughs> As far as the movie is concerned, no. I, do I recommend it? Eh. Uh, I'm going to give it a three and a half. Because uh-huh. there's nothing really wrong with the film, <laughs> except that last maybe 25 minutes of CG. <laughs> it's pretty pretty bad. Yeah. Um, the, everyone's having a good time. It's, it is a ra- definitely a rated R movie, but it's not so heavily rated R that younger horror enthusiasts might get turned off on. Uh, it's for an R movie with lots of gore. It's pretty lighthearted. It doesn't make you think too much. Um, you're not emotionally drained after this. That's for damn sure. It's not hereditary where you're like, Oh God, (laughs) I'm done. I'm done. I'm just going to walk off into the sunset and I'm done with everything. Um, it's, it's a, it's a creature feature in its, uh, entirety. I, 
man, this should have been on the uh, this should have been a Roger Corman thing back in the 50s. This is a wonderful film to see. It's but it's also terrible. I, <laughs> I'm so mixed. I have such mixed emotions about it. Uh, I'm going to stick with a three and a half uh, because I kind of sort of recommend it and I definitely had a ball with it. All right, that, that's respectable. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm mostly with you. I, I agree. I think it's a really fun creature feature. I, it, it is one that I am. It's kind of a hometown favorite, mm -hmm. and I, the, the biggest problem is the visual effects. I think, <laughs> and there's a, a quote from. Uh, <laughs> from some of the people who worked at industrial light and magic who created what they called the Steven summer scale <laughs> of, of how much digital effects to put in a scene and the lowest to highest rating are what the shot needs, what the computers can handle. Oh my God. The computers are about to crash and the highest being what Steven wants. And <laughs> And so he definitely leans on that stuff. Uh, I am often of the mind that like, hey, nobody left a theater humming the, the special effects. The special effects rarely sink a movie, no pun intended. Uh, but in this case, they certainly don't, especially at the end, it doesn't do the movie a whole lot of favors, which is a real bummer. And... But I still like it. I still really like it. I still think it's a lot of fun. And uh, I, I stand by that. So I am going to give this a solid four stars. Um, like I said, this is just me being a, a little wistful about like, oh, yeah, th this was uh, a terrific movie. Um, the first time I saw it, I, I didn't like it as much as I do now, mm. you know, I, I, I had my problems with it initially because of the effects, but the more I watch it, the more I'm like, this is just a good time. <laughs> this is a real turn your brain off and just let the movie happen. And there are some good performances in it and there are some good set pieces and driving a wave runner through flooded tunnels of a cruise ship seems like a real that's fun a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah but i mean uh, nonetheless three and a half stars and four stars that to in my mind that is us telling listeners if you've never seen deep rising you should probably watch deep i'm pretty rising. sure that's it's, it's worth your time it's it's not very long it well what is it hour 40 yeah like an hour yeah, 40 that's, that's yeah it's right. not that's terrible right. Yeah, so, uh, you know, give it a go. Um, in the meantime, though, before I cut you yeah. loose, uh, it is time to talk about the three things you may not know about Deep Rising. Yes, I'm so excited. I, I love this. Bring it on. All right, so there is a, a frequent collaborator of Stephen Summers, an editor named Bob Duxay, and he talked about how the studio, after seeing a cut of the film, uh, said, hey, can we make this PG-13? <laughs> and he referred to this as a Vietnam mission, which meant this is going to take a lot of time and we're not going to be able to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, this is either a movie where we drive a hatchet into a guy's head or it's not. And uh, and sure enough, they they worked on a PG thirteen cut that just never came. Thank together. goodness. Yeah. Uh, so, number two on our list of three things that you may not know about Deep Rising, Pantucci uh, was originally supposed to be murdered by the sea monster, but uh, when they started previewing the film, audiences got real pissed oh, off about. Oh really? That. Oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, because they like Pantucci so much that they recut the movie so that he, you know, shows up on the island that? at the end. Uh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was saved by the yeah, audience. Right. Yeah. Good, good for you, audience. 
Um, speaking of the island, this is the, the third and final thing, but the, the thing that is most interesting to me. So, um, you might say to yourself, hey, that island looks a little bit like Skull Island. <laughs> well, that is very true because this movie was supposed to be a sort of halfway se uh, prequel to a reboot of King Kong that Steven Summers was going to do. And uh, like around this time, in the late 90s, they, they were going to redo King uh. Kong uh, uh, through Hollywood Pictures, uh, who is the studio responsible for Deep Rising. And, you know, like the Godzilla uh, movie had come out mm -hmm. that TriStar released. It was really poorly wait, received. Wait, there was a Godzilla movie in 98? I don't understand. Yeah, it's it's best if you've never seen it. Uh, uh, you're, or or just have hit yourself in the head with a brick <laughs> enough that you forgot that it ever happened. That's the right way to go. You're li li you're leading. It was a really cool life, cartoon uh, show right for way. a while. <laughs> right? Yeah. There was, um, King Kong versus Godzilla is still one of my favorite things. Not not the recent one. I'm talking about the one oh, where King oh, Kong is always oh, you and me both, on buddy. the juice. Have, have you seen the new or the? Uh... The, the Japanese release that came out in the Criterion Collection. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> I like a movie where there is a giant ape who is doing nothing but trying to get he's his fix. Just, just getting drunk the whole time. It's great. He, he's a junkie. Mm -hmm. King Kong is I a junkie in that movie. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I love it so much. Anyway, yeah, but yeah, so, so Hollywood Pictures is like, hey, we're going to make our own King Kong. And, and kind of show up TriStar who fucked up Pretty Godzilla. Much. Yeah. So it was picked up and uh, Stephen Summers was attached to the mummy by that oh. point. But he was like, I definitely want to do yeah. this. But then the mummy hit and they wanted him to do a sequel to that. So he got involved in the mummy sequel. And the, the King Kong remake just got put on the oh. shelf until Peter Jackson in 2005. Mm decided that he was gonna do it so there is a world in which deep rising was part of the king kong universe Man. i i would have liked to have seen that i, I right. nothing against uh peter jackson's kong it didn't need to be that long mm. uh but i it's good it's good it's good it's too long and I would have yeah. loved to have seen another take on King Kong. Like, the, the latest Kong Skull Island is a new take on King Kong. Thank you very much, Hollywood uh, yeah. uh, deities. Thank you very much for giving us a new spin on King Kong instead of just regurgitating the same old tune. Uh, boy, I, I would have paid a lot of money to see <laughs> Stephen Sommers' uh, King Kong movie. Oh, My sure. goodness, that would have been amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, there you have it. There are three things that you, uh, you may or may not know about Deep Rising. Um, Pete, this has been super fun. Bo, I, oh my gosh, I'm so happy we finally got to do this, even though we may have done it before and we just don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listeners, be sure to let us know if, if in Go fact, back into the archives, not the first right? time. <laughs> um, but we will definitely do this again, but before, uh, we do that... Uh, tell people once more where they can find you uh, so that they can get more of that sweet, sweet wind. <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. <laughs> just uh, just head out to any of your podcatchers. We're on all of them that I can think of. Uh, good Beer, Bad Movie Night, where we drink great beer and watch bad movies. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> There's one person in the cast that doesn't like any of the movies that I pick. <laughs> and uh, I usually like most of the movies I pick, so bad movie is relative uh we are part of the uh give me back my podcast network there's a bunch of shows over there you can go and check out there's horror action wrestling and a bunch of others so yeah come on over uh we'd love to interact with you we've got the facebook pages also if you'd like to join those so uh please uh reach out to us we'd love to hear from you Excellent, man. All right, knuckleheads. I'll be right back to uh, close the show here in a second. And there you have it. That's my conversation with uh, with Pete about 
Deep Rising. Uh, we had a really wonderful time talking about that, and you will get more uh, from Pete in the future. One of the things I really wanted to do this month was to bring on some voices that I hadn't really had on the show before. And you are going to hear some more new voices on, on the show this month. And I, I really like it. I, I like having a broad uh, spectrum of people to kind of bring on and talk about some of these movies. And, you know, you will hear them come back, of course. But uh, I like this rotating co-host chair. It, it makes me happy. And, uh, and getting other people's perspective. Like uh, last week with Jason, who is not necessarily the biggest fan of movies like Orca. Uh, but we had a great conversation about it. Or this time with Pete, where we're much more aligned uh, in terms of how we feel about these kinds of movies. So, uh, yeah, it's it. I, I like having different perspectives. And I'm going to keep working to make sure that the people I talk to aren't always just, you know, parroting the things that I say that they have their own perspectives and their own, um, uh, interests and, and perspectives on these things. So, uh, yeah, yeah, all of that is a lot of fun. I'm very pleased with, uh, the shows this month and, uh, and coming up very soon. In fact, you're going to get my conversation with Duncan McLeish, who was coming back for only the second time on the dark parade. Uh, and alone this time. Uh, and we will be talking about Moby Dick next week, which you may say to yourself, the Gregory Peck movie, is that really a horror movie? But I think when you listen to that conversation, you'll understand why we felt like, you know, this is probably a good fit for uh, a horror movie discussion. Uh, so I'll leave that till then. In the meantime, thanks uh, th so much for supporting the show. Be sure where you can, when you can, share the show around, rate and review where you can. All of that stuff really helps a lot, and I really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, I take a lot of pride in this show and, and work hard on it, and anything that you can do to help spread the word is, uh, is, is of course, much appreciated. And I hope you're enjoying it. And if you're, you are enjoying it, I hope you get in touch with me. And you can do that at a couple of different places. I'll be the first to tell you, I am not uh, the most active on social media, but you can absolutely uh, find us on Facebook and or Meta, whatever the hell they call it, at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash dark parade. Uh, that is, it tends to be where most of the discussion takes place. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at dark parade pod. Uh, and I check that at least once a day, so feel free to drop me a line there, but I may not, uh, respond right away just because I, I don't always look at Twitter. I find Twitter to be, uh, disturbing as a rule, <laughs> so bear with me. Um, you can also just email me at, uh, Bo, that's B-O, at legionpodcasts.com. And uh, I'll, I'll certainly uh, hit you up there. But I'll tell you, if you really want to get in touch with me and you really want to do so on the quick, uh, you can join our Discord server. And you can find that uh, over on legionpodcasts.com forward slash the dash dark dash parade. Uh, legionpodcasts.com forward slash the dash dark dash parade uh, is where you can find every episode of the show. You can also find uh, links to the Facebook and the Twitter and the Discord. And uh, there's also a GoFundMe over there I have. Uh, if you have a couple extra bucks, I am actually going back to school in order to uh, to, to live the glamorous life of a public school teacher. Uh, but, you know, where I live, there uh, there is a bit of an assault on public educators. And rather than you know, post memes about it. I thought, yeah, I should probably finish, uh, my certification to teach and get in the trenches and help fight in that battle. So, uh, if you would like to help support me in that cause, uh, so that I don't have, you know, crippling student debt on the other side of it, uh, you can certainly do so at the GoFundMe linked on legionpodcast.com forward slash the dash dark dash parade. Uh, so that is it for this time. We've got more horrors in, on, and under the sea 
coming your way next week. We've got some more found footage fool. We've got what you watching. We've got heart of horror, all that stuff coming up uh, here in May. And uh, thank you as always for joining the dark parade. We'll see you soon. <laughs>